Hello, my name is Yulitsa. I am deafblind. This is an introduction to protactile language, which emerged within the deafblind community. First, I want to emphasize that the way we are in physical contact here, through touch, is critical for protactile language. Deafblind children do not have full access to auditory and visual language. Interaction and instruction through these language modalities will impede and slow the learning process. However, if we begin by connecting with them through touch, they are immersed in what is directly felt and experienced and can acquire information that they readily understand. Hearing people generally engage through spoken language geared toward the ears, and deaf people generally engage through signed language geared toward the eyes. Information conveyed to deaf-blind people through these modalities can come across muddled and incoherent, making learning difficult. When others join deaf-blind children in what we call contact space, shared space on the body to make language, learning and development is fostered. When communicating in protactile language, touch happens reciprocally through a back-and-forth exchange. Protactile language isn't directed only toward the deaf-blind individual, but is also directed toward the person they're speaking with. Touch goes both ways and is received and expressed by both parties. Protectile is a language for everyone, including families, schools, and teachers. Anyone can learn it. It's important to note that Protectile is a language, not a set of techniques or a system to be used in conjunction with ASL or spoken English. ASL has its place within the deaf community, and spoken English has its place among hearing communities. When it comes to protactile, how much one sees or hears is irrelevant. What's important is that we establish mutual contact space with our bodies, a space for language. If the hand of the person listening to me is disconnected from mine when I'm speaking, I do not feel them listening. We are disconnected. Deaf-blind children will also feel disconnected when sighted people aren't in physical contact while listening. Children may behave as if no one is present with them. This social withdrawal leads to feelings of isolation and loneliness. Children may be fearful or apprehensive because they don't have strong mutual attachments with others and don't know what's happening around them. This impedes growth and learning. However, if others remain in touch and co-present with deaf-blind children, they feel more comfortable and receive greater information. This also allows for incidental learning, which is important for all children. It provides food for their brains and they can soak it up like sponges. It also builds confidence as children get their bearings and understand more about the environment and interactions they're immersed in. This establishes the groundwork for future language learning. The first step is to situate our bodies in a configuration to establish contact space. Each hand has a role in protactile language, and I will demonstrate these in this series of videos. This hand, the hand of the listener, may appear to just be resting here on my leg, but it too has a pivotal role. I will demonstrate all of these features, which taken together allow for co-presence and reciprocity in protactile language.